coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. When you, as a believer, mm -hmm. make a commitment to meditate the Word of God and renew your mind, mm -hmm. then your eyes will be opened. True. That's when the enlightenment True. comes. Because really, mm -hmm. you, at some point, you wake up feeling empty. Your body has been satisfied, mm -hmm. but that's and about where it's... Yeah. There's a void. Mm -hmm. There's an emptiness. Mm -hmm. But you don't recognize that if you don't, first of all, renew your mind to the Word of God. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who comes with good news, who gives word of peace, saying that salvation is near, who says to Zion, your God is ruling. We invite you to become a partner today. Visit www.freshdew.tv or call 0700 Fresh Dew. That is plus 234. 700-3737-4339. Hello and welcome to Fresh Tea. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene, and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Tea. Today on Fresh Tea, we're continuing our message series, Four, Four Kinds, kinds of, of Love in, in These Last, last days. days. And this is part seven, seven of that message series. So our text has been from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boosters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, from the Amplified Version. But understand this, that in the last days will come set in perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered, lovers of money, and aroused by an inordinate greedy desire for wealth, proud and arrogant and contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy and profane. I mean, haven't you met these kind of people? Mm. Oh my goodness. Horrible. They will be without natural human affection, callous and inhuman, wow. relentless, admitted of no truth mm. or appeasement. They will be slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate and loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce, haters of good. They will be treacherous betrayers, rash and inflated with self-conceit. Mm. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements, wow. more than and rather than mm. lovers of God. Wow. Wow. Second Timothy 3.1 from the Living Bible. You may as well know this too, Timothy, that in the last days, it is going to be very difficult to be a Christian. These are signs of the last days. And we are in the last of the last days, like we looked at at the beginning yeah. of this series. We're looking at some of these words that you know we see in, in, in this um, section of scripture. And there's so many words that we've gone through. We can't look at all of them. We looked at unthankful, which is an acaristic, acaristos disposition, one that doesn't, you know, acknowledge the grace of God. Mm. And we said there are certain things that when you pursue after those things, they make you an unthankful person. We began to look at them. The first is when you are a lover of self. Mm. That's a philotus disposition. Yeah. 
Then we said, when you're a lover of money, mm. that's a filler guru's yes. disposition. And we're going to start the third one today. And that's what verse 4 says. Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. So we're focusing on lovers of pleasure. pleasure. Well, if he talks about lovers of pleasure, are we suggesting mm -hmm. that we should be lovers of hardship? Mm. Again, just like we said, nobody loves poverty. Sure. Nobody loves hardship. <laughs> but there's something wrong when you are described yeah. as a lover of pleasure. Wow. Let's look at that expression. Mm. It's the word philodonos. Mm. Again, we see phil there, mm. which is the Greek, one of the Greek words for love, mm. philos, and then hedone. Mm. So philos is the word that means dear or valuable or to be fond of. And hedone is, the, is from the word hendano. Mm. That means to please, mm. sensual Sense. delight, Ooh. by implication, desire, lust, and pleasure. Mm. So philodonos, therefore, mm. means to be fond of pleasure, mm. voluptuous, a lover of pleasure. Mm. You actually exist for pleasure. Mm. That's what you focus on. You get up in the morning and you look for what is going to give you pleasure. This is a last day spirit. It's a spirit of the last days. There are people who live and exist for pleasure. Mm. They exist to do what makes them feel good. Right. Remember, you are spirit. Right. You have a soul. You live in a body. Mm -hmm. What makes your body feel good? Mm. But your body is not who you are. That's not who you are. You are spirit. And how renewed is your mind? How saved is your soul? Those are the things you need to focus on as a child of God. But people who are hedonists, don't deprive themselves of their desire or pleasure. Nothing will take my pleasure away mm. from me. Mm. If my pleasure is booze, alcohol, mm. nothing will take it away from me. Mm. If it's sex, I'm not going to go a day without sex. Mm. If it's um, uh, money, yeah. uh, gadgets, whatever yeah. gives me pleasure, mm. not, I live and exist for pleasure. That's a base life. Yeah, the mantra for the hedonist is if it feels good, do it. Do it. I get it. And Bust the consequences. Yes, there are no consequences. There are really. absolutely none, yeah. yeah. Because the highest form of good for such a person is the pleasure they derive. So that's where we get the English word hedonism. Mm. And that's what it means, the pursuit of pleasure. So you actually deliberately go after pleasure. Sensual, is yeah. Sensual self-indulgence. Wow. Indulgence. The ethical theory that pleasure, mm. in the sense of the satisfaction of desires wow. is the highest good wow. and proper aim of human life. What a base life. What a low life. Low life. You should get a life in Christ. <laughs> and you know what's sad is when you find a philodeno spirit in the body of Christ. Hmm. When there are people who pursue after pleasure and you find that from the pulpit to the pew in some situations. Now that is a tragedy. This is the kind of pleasure that the person wants to give satisfaction to their, to their flesh. So something that is not, noteworthy, mm. you know, when you look at that word hedone mm -hmm. and you look through the scriptures, right. every time you find that word hedone used in the New right. Testament, it's used negatively. You never find hedone used positively, Positive. right. like a good pleasure. Mm. You don't. Mm. You find it with respect to negative things. And let's take a bit of time and look at those. I'll look at a few and partially I'll look at the rest. Let's start with Titus 3.3. 3. And let's look at where Hedone is used there. For we ourselves were also mm. once foolish, mm. disobedient, deceived, serving various loss and pleasures, Hedone, mm. living in malice and envy, wow. hateful and hating one another. Mm. You see there that this is, this is a picture of what we were, mm. meaning we are not supposed to be those things. Amen. If we were, we cannot are. Mm. That's good. <laughs> we cannot be those things. <laughs> right. If we were, we're not those things mm. presently. So it's abnormal for you That's as good. a child of God to still be a hedonist. Mm. And there we see that people, you know, described in Titus 3.3 3, were slaves to wow. pleasure. Wow. Can you imagine being enslaved to pleasure? It's an addiction. Mm. And that's what you find when people are addicted to what makes them feel good, addicted to sex, mm. addicted to drugs, mm. addicted to drinking, mm. addicted to, you know, to different kind of environments, mm. that kind of addiction 
is born out of a hedonistic spirit. Before, so, sorry, yeah, go on, go on, funny, please. The funny thing is that this, some of these people who are in bondage to these things, yes. they don't know. Oh, no, they don't. They just feel that, wow. Feels good. It feels good. Life couldn't be better. But the than... only way they can know is when they renew their minds. Exactly. It comes back to the renewal, renewal of the mind. mind. Yeah. When, when you, as a believer, mm -hmm. make a commitment to meditate the word of God and renew your mind, mm -hmm. then your eyes will be open. True. That's when the enlightenment True. comes. Because really, mm -hmm. you, at some point, you wake up feeling empty. Your body has been satisfied, mm -hmm. but that's and about where it's... Yeah. There's a void. Mm -hmm. There's an emptiness. Mm -hmm. But you don't recognize that if you don't, first of all, renew your mind to the word of God. So mm -hmm. Titus 3.3 is telling us about people who are slaves, and it is salvation mm -hmm. that breaks that bondage. Praise God. It is salvation that breaks the chains. Mm -hmm. It is salvation that sets you free. Look at Hebrews 11.25. I mean, if you've been set free, why do you want to be enslaved again? Mm. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing mm. pleasures wow. of sin. Look at that, pleasures of sin. Pleasures of sin. How can sin be pleasurable? Mm. Sin can only be pleasurable mm. when it's temporary mm. and in the realm of your body, that's good. in the realm of your flesh. Mm. And that's it. It's just a one minute. And after that, mm. all the repercussions, mm. all the consequences, that's good. all the wake up call. That's good. So how, lo how lasting? Fleeting, fleeting pleasure. And that's the devil is a bad devil, man. Very bad Because one. after you enjoy, he tantalizes you. Yeah. He baits you with that enjoyment of momentary pleasure. Yeah. And once that pleasure is done, that visits you with second base. He puts this consequences. Thank you. The same him that's good. There who you brought go. the pleasure there you go. comes with the consequences. Wow. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. Running over. <laughs> plus overflow. <laughs> so these are temporary <laughs> pleasures of sin. Yeah. So just taking that step further, if you look at James chapter 4, verse 1, we see something else where the same word is used. James is writing to the believers, to saints. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure, pleasure. that war in your members? So seeking to satisfy these pleasures is a cause of fight and strife, unfortunately, among believers. So if you look at the squabbles, the quarrels, the gossips, the bickering, the biting that exists among believers, Pastor, many times it's to satisfy some form of Self. flesh yeah. or pleasure. And like we just said, it's a temporary one. And so, and again, for that to happen, it shows the way you are spiritually, you know? And, and th these are things that, notice how he even describes them. Where do wars, wars, fights, is because to satisfy these pleasures. And this is something a child of God must not be involved in. Should shouldn't not be, be found near. Shouldn't be found a, a thousand miles close to you. If you look at James chapter 4, verse 3, it now takes it a step further. What is the danger of having these things in your life? You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Now, we've seen that this word hedone is never used in a good sense. Never. So this is a bad pleasure. That is, this is describing a believer who has an inordinate desire, a desire that God does not want to to, to gratify, of course, God will not back that up. And you take it to God in prayer. Yeah. You are asking amiss. amiss. You are asking, if you check that word amiss, evilly. So why is it evil? Because it is to satisfy your pleasure. I mean, I mean surprising. I mean, I say sometimes God has different kinds of children. But <laughs> you, 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 find, you find Christians sometimes praying for things that the word of God Clearly does says. not guarantee them, and you want yeah. to examine them again. Yeah. Do you know Jesus? Yeah. Is, are you really born again? Is yeah. your name in the book of life? Yeah. Are, which, are, are we serving the same Jesus? Yeah. Is this the same passion and love? Because even, excuse my language, common sense doesn't even make, I mean, if, if you look at it commonsensically, it doesn't make sense. But people are asking for things in order to satisfy their desires. And sometimes preachers, even when preaching about prosperity, we need to be careful. So that we are not just like what we were talking about in the previous part. Yeah. So if people don't have this impression that the highest form of good yeah. when you serve God, the only thing about your Christianity is money, clothes, 
passion. And, that, and, that, and that's a measure of how successful, successful you yeah, are. Yeah. And there are churches, yeah. there are denomination, denominations where there is a lot of emphasis. You yeah. see these wars among them, people dressing, decking, the pastor's wife must dress in a particular way, and if she does that, all the other ladies must, must fall in line. Oh, and credit. If, you, you took the words from my mouth. Whether you, if you have to borrow, beg, steal, bully, bully, do anything, or even say, okay, God, answer me. What are you doing to satisfy mm -hmm. hedonism? No, we were made Allah something Allah Allah more Allah than that. Amen. Yeah. So that's James chapter 4, verse 3. And now look at Luke 8, 14. This is, this is, this is serious. Now the ones, this is the parable of the sower. Have you taught on the parable of the sower on fresh dew? Uh -uh. Oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> the I, don't, I don't remember. Yeah. 22 years is, is it's possible. A long, it's a long. But it, this is the parable of the sword. This is mm. in Luke's rendition. This is a powerful verse. Mm. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life. Mm. And look at this start, sad conclusion and bring no fruit to maturity. The pleasures choke it. The pleasures choke it. Again, that word, he donate. You know, pastor has a series on, uh, on, on the parable of the sower, mm. you know. And, and one of the things we, we learn from the parable of the sower is, you know, you have the wayside here, mm -hmm. the stony, sto stony, stony ground. ground. You have the thorny ground, and you have the good ground. And really, it shows the different responses of people to the word of God. The word it, is constant. The word is constant. And many times also, the pre we blame the preacher, but many times the, the problem is not really with the preacher. Many times it's with the soil. And the thorny ground is one of those soils. And look at what it says here. The sad thing about this pastor is because the stony ground, the wayside hearer, they really didn't begin to bring forth fruit. Uh -uh. But this guy had already started bringing forth fruit. <gasps> but he didn't bring forth fruit to Too maturity. maturity. He true. didn't... He didn't come to due season. It was choked. It was, yes, it was choked. What of the things that choked it along with cares, riches, are the pleasures of life? It seems to say to me that if you are, in, if you are indulged in pleasures, living for these, for these things, these are forces that will militate against the power of the word of God, mm. stifle it, and this, this brings frustration, this in particular, oh, because, yeah. because you're on your way. You already started seeing some manifestations but it's not come to fruition. And all of a sudden, you're frustrated and say, ah, what of this thing? I thought this thing. You get so close, yet you're so far. Because these things come in, they choke in the word, and it doesn't bring forth fruit. And you look at how related they are. Cares, there you go. riches, pleasures Pleasure. of life. Yeah. Think about yourself, money, your pleasures, yeah. all locked in. All tied in one way or the other with pleasures and money. Material yeah. things. Yeah. Material things. Yeah. And they choke the word. So... May that not be our case in the mm -hmm. name of Jesus, mm -hmm. all right? So let's end with the last point for this for today. Hedonism is a very dangerous spirit mm. that is not of God. It's not of God. You see, hedon hedonists exist for the satisfaction of their desires, whether those desires are of God or not. Very dangerous. That's dangerous. The first thing to do, the first thing to find out about any desire, thank you, Lord, this is good, is if it is born of God. But again, you have to know God's word. Yes. You have to dance with the Holy Spirit. You need to renew your mind. Your mind because how then do you know? Walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Yes. You need to grow yourself yeah. in God. Yeah. To then be able to discern what is a God-planted desire. Amen. And what is a self-planted, family-planted, society-planted, pressure-planted desire. Mm. Yeah. Where is the desire coming from? Mm. That's the first thing. That's the first thing, yeah. So, the grace of God does not fulfill hedonistic desires because this philodonous spirit encourages an acharisto spirit, which is an ungrateful spirit, a spirit that negates the working of the grace of God. That's terrible. You see, if God puts any desire in your heart, he will empower you you by his grace to, to fulfill, fulfill those desires. So the grace of God basically just stands like that. Right. When it's a hedonistic request or hedonistic desire, it mm. does not fulfill no. hedonistic desires. It doesn't. It doesn't. And somebody will pray. And it can be subtle sometimes. 
because something almost manipulative. Yes. God. Yes. Yes. So and, and it brings frustration because mm -hmm. here you are, you're asking God, you are doing all these things, but it's not of God. But whenever God puts a desire in your heart, he will fulfill it. Look I, at Psalm 37, verse 4. Purpose. Lovely. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your he heart. He is the one that will give you. He will give you because why? Notice the key. You are delighting yourself, yourself in the Lord. Yeah. And that word delight means to be pleasurable mm -hmm. to the Lord. So as you spend time with him, you're loving on him. You're getting to know his word. You're getting to know his spirit. You're dancing with his spirit. You're walking in the spirit. You will find some desires begin to rise up in your heart. Those desires are put there by God and the grace of God will back them up because he will be the one to give you those desires because he put them in his heart, his by presence. your heart, by his word and by his spirit. And you see, some, some Christians, you know, cannot see fun in being a Christian, mm -hmm. you know, because people think that God is a killjoy. He doesn't want you to enjoy. So, 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 so the, the picture of a Christian is, oh, no form of pleasure. Sad life. Sad. You're always griping. You are morose. It's not an easy road. There are even songs like that. It's not an easy <laughs> road. We are journeying to heaven. So you should be, you Let's should be sad. Let's plod through this Plot, boring oh, Lord. Sorry, I don't want to be that kind of Christian. I'm not that kind of Christian. Not... <laughs> I enjoy my life. Amen. <laughs> and like we said in the previous episode, if you're not born again, if you're not in Christ, you don't have life. Man. You need to get not a just life. a life. The life. life. <laughs> the life of the Son of God. So, you know, pleasures, parties, disco, this, that. Listen, some Christians look at their former life and say, oh, I remember those good old days. Sorry, they were bad, old, <laughs> dark days. And may I say to you, I don't miss anything in the world. Mm -mm. I don't miss. I love Jesus, mm -mm. and I so love him. And I know that because he himself gives us pleasures, mm -hmm. which his grace will back up. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We love your presence. Thank we you, love Lord. you. We love Thank your you, word. Thank you, Jesus. There is indeed fullness of joy Amen. in your presence. Amen. Pleasures forevermore Amen. at your right hand. We give you praise. Thank we you. give you glory. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Father, thank for you. accepting us Amen. in the Beloved, for rescuing us Amen. from our old life mm. and for giving us joy that is unspeakable in Amen. you, Amen. finding true desires, mm. true joy, mm. true pleasure in knowing you. Amen. We give you praise forever. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You have so many questions about your life and life in general. Why? When? How? What? Who? And the list goes on. Sister, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He is knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today? To surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God. If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, according to Romans 10, 8 to 13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life please call us at 0700 fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we will be there for you.
thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew, and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life. <music>